I've been very lenient on some of my past episodes, so now I gotta get a little bit ruthless. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. I know I don't look like a drag queen today, but sometimes I film these videos out of drag because we're trying to get them out to you as quickly as possible. But if you're new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9, Episode 6, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is Atomic Blonde, where the queens must give us a post-apocalyptic look with a blonde wig. At least that's how I'm interpreting it because it was a little unclear what Atomic Blonde actually means. But uh, let's find out together and let's see uh, your thoughts. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Chanel. And Chanel is coming out in this like sort of green and brown outfit that is all ripped and as if she's just coming out of the jungle. She's got a little bit of fur on her and she says that it is 1950s Marilyn Monroe meets post-apocalyptic Mad Max. And I'm like, that's a lot of things that you're trying to put into this, but I guess that's the only way you can explain this outfit. As she walks out, I didn't understand it. And this is what also made me think, what is the theme? Because Atomic Blonde is just blonde hair, so I thought people were gonna go all over the place, but it definitely is some sort of post-apocalyptic thing. So if you guys don't know, the queens actually have to prepare the looks before coming on to Drag Race, and as they come on to Drag Race, the themes are not always exactly as they appear on the show, because when they get ready for them, they give them like a sentence or two uh, to kind of describe the theme, but they don't give them the exact theme. So considering the amount of people that went in like this post-apocalyptic vibe, there was probably some like Mad Max reference in that description. That is my only explanation because they didn't call it post-apocalyptic, they called it Atomic Blonde. But that's, that's just, you know, some background information. But getting back to this outfit, it looks confused. It really does feel like she's trying to put a lot of things together. I think that like the jungle idea could have been interesting, but then she's paired it with this like really beautiful coiffed hair. And so like the two don't really mix together and they kind of really clash. On top of it, it feels like there's a lot of pieces on her, but all the pieces are just individual pieces. I don't see the full look. When she says Mad Max, I don't see Mad Max. I see more Predator but like more Arnold Schwarzenegger in the jungle at hunting the predator as opposed to like the predator himself and I say that because Mad Max kind of gives me a little bit of that futuristic a little bit of that like edgier like I'm gonna go hunting a bit of metal that's what I see as Mad Max not necessarily this this feels like very jungle camo-y maybe prehistoric a little bit but I, I think that the lack of a clear idea is what is the downfall of this look because it never really comes together if it was me I would edit a lot of this out I think if you wanted to go more or less with this outfit i would have done completely different hair maybe something a little bit more grungier you know what i mean i would have done a little bit more of a spooky makeup uh you know maybe a cross in her eye a scar to like edge it up a little bit i would have lost the necklaces i would have lost the earrings i would have went more in that grunge vibe i probably would have added fur on the shoulders to match the fur at the bottom to really give you a little bit more of a cohesive look and to give you more of that more of that like prehistoric vibe all in all this is a little bit of a mess and definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Georges. And Georges is coming out in this a little spiky outfit with silver spikes all over her. She's wearing a little bralette and panties and thigh-high pink boots. She's paired it with this giant mohawk and girl, does she look great. First up, Georges is showing body adi adi, which we know is something that Georges likes to do. So this is no surprise that she is wearing minimal clothing, but the minimal clothing that she is wearing is really making a statement. It's making a statement because of all these spikes, but also because of the hairdo. When this came out, my initial thought was like, this feels like something plastic tiara would wear. And I'm not mad at that because it also fits Georges because Georges also likes sort of the same similar aesthetics as a plastic tiara. But I find that Georges is just never able to reach 
plastics level, but with this, she definitely did. I think the whole vibe is really cool, it's really sexy, it's got an edge to it, and it feels like Georgia's, but also doesn't. It feels like Georgia's, but like, 2.0, which is kind of what I was expecting and wanting from Georgia's coming back on All Stars, and I'm finally seeing it now, and I'm like, yes, girl, yes. Because Georgia's has really been middle of the road for me, like, all season, and then she turns up with this, and I'm like, work. If I was gonna change one small thing, I probably would have done one little streak of pink in the hair just to tie it onto the boots, but that is like the tiniest detail and that is just my personal preference of having a little bit of color in the hair. All in all, this is fantastic and 100% gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Plastic Tiara, and Plastic Tiara is coming out in this like silver, black, and pink bodysuit with these uh, thigh-high boots. She's got this giant mask on and these like exhaust pipes coming out the back of her. She's like this half-car, half-human futuristic bitch. She said that she's coming up straight out of a Magna. I'm not really familiar with Magna. Now, for those of you who don't know, that is like a sort of uh, Asian, Japanese uh, comic book. So it's just a style of comic book, which is a little bit more exaggerated and over the top, but there's so many stories and there's so much to get into there that is like a whole world uh, that people are really into that I'm just not, uh, to be honest, uh, but it doesn't mean I can't appreciate this outfit. My interpretation was like, take Drag Race and bring it to the future, which I kind of love my own interpretation of it, but either work, honestly. I think that uh, this is very well done, and maybe with the color schemes of both of these outfits and the fact that they came out one after each other, but when Plastiques came out, I was like, this further proves the point that Plastique would wear what Georges came out with, because obviously they were thinking in the same like vein, in the same way of interpreting this theme. All in all, this is amazing, but do we expect anything less from Plastic Tiara? And it is 100% gonna be a bow! Next up, it's Roxy Andrews, and Roxy Andrews is coming out in this sort of like a gold dress with these fur arms, fur hat, and fur legs. She's definitely giving you a little bit of a, like lion or saber tooth tiger or a little bit of that prehistoric vibe, making it super sexy. You know like those girls who go up to Halloween and they're like a cat, but they just put little bunny ears on it? That's what this is giving me. She wanted to look sexy and she made it fit to this theme. Now I will say comparative to someone like Chanel, I did appreciate that she took the idea of fur and put it a little bit everywhere. So it's just not like in one spot. But similarly to Chanel, I don't like this outfit. I don't think that this is a very strong. I think that this theme of post-apocalyptic or prehistoric is an amazing theme that you can do so much with. And this one really feels flat. Again, it feels like a few pieces thrown together and not necessarily like as a fully realized look. I just really wish she would have pushed it further. It feels right now that she's trying to do two things and put them together, which is this like glamour meets a prehistoric and that's where it's like sort of clashing. To fix this, I would have done this in one of two ways. First, lost the gold top entirely and then maybe just did like a bikini top with the fur on it. I think that that would have already done it and then it would have been all fur all over or lost the skirt and do sort of like this chain effect all around so it's like barely covering all the little pieces so it would have had like the chains and fur aspect and then done chains a little bit everywhere. I think right now the gold is feeling too glamorous for this fur and that's sort of where it's throwing me off. I also think that had she done just like a black bar of makeup around her face, it would have really just taken it to that like post-apocalyptic era as opposed to doing this like super glamorous vibe. All in all, really not my favorite and definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie's coming out in this like purple, pinky, orange with a little touch of yellow dress that's like sort of all ripped and ruffled and all intricate together. This dress is super interesting to me because it feels like it's ripped, but you can also see that it is like purposely done that way because it just exposes just the right materials and all the pieces that are 
like ripped are really intricate with lots of things going on to it when she comes out uh, my first initial thought is she kind of reminds me of like a disease molecule but you know like those drawings you get when you see like a virus and, and then it kind of like exploded all over her and honestly i think that is super cool this feels not only avant-garde but elegant and this is like very very different from anything that we've seen vanji do i think this is a really smart and really well done and very different from everybody else so it goes to show the thinking now the one part that i'm a little iffy about is the hair i think this would have looked a lot better with either a pink or purple hair not necessarily blonde but the theme is atomic blonde so she didn't really have a choice of color on this one but despite that she still looks stunning and it is definitely going to be a ah. Next up is Angeria Paris Van Michaels, and Angeria is coming out in this like green and brown post apocalyptic vibe. She's got the same energy and channeling the same vibes as Chanel was, but doing it in a slightly different way. Miss Angeria is coming out with these broad shoulders, which got like this moss fur on her. She's got a tight body with her corset and these big hips with everything dangling from it. She definitely feels like she was dropped from the sky, landed in a parachute, and she is going to survive the jungle she's got the ripped tights to match and she's got this big blonde hair yet again this is hair that i don't think necessarily matches with this look uh, again probably would have went with a different color but if you had to go with blonde i wish she would have done something a little bit more messy a little bit more edgy to kind of match the messiness of the outfit the outfit itself is messy but i think it's supposed to be that way so i don't really mind it that much because it does feel a little bit cohesive that being said for it being a runway it didn't really wow me it didn't really push me in any specific direction and this is drag at the end of the day so I felt like it could have used I don't know maybe some rhinestones or some gold or some some detailing I find like the breasts really plain the corset really plain some some detailing could have really helped there and even with the moss like why not throw a couple of stones in there to make it just like zhuzh it up a little bit you know to bring it to that next level all in all this isn't bad but it isn't great either and i've been very lenient on some of my past episodes so now i gotta get a little bit ruthless so for this outfit i am gonna go ahead and still give it a drab <laughs> Next up is Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out in this like sort of half dress, half nude illusion. Her dress is like this black and silver material and looks like it's getting ripped off her body. She's got a prosthetic breast with scars all over it and scars all down her leg. She looks like she's this glamorous cyborg from the future coming to uh, save the world or just trying to survive. What I love about Gottmik is when she has an idea, she goes for it. Uh, she's got the prosthetic boob on her, which looks so real and so blended, like no one would ever be able to tell. On top of it, she's got the scar on her leg, but also she's got two different color contacts in, one that's a little bit bigger, one that's a little bit smaller. So it definitely gives you this vibe. This definitely feels like a fashion interpretation of the future. Something you would probably see on a runway of one of the big designers. And I kind of love that because then that is got mixed style. She is the fashion queen. So to bring fashion into this theme, I think was really hard, but she did it so, so well. This is super smart, super on theme, and super got make, and definitely going to be a super fast. <laughs> Next up, it's Nina West. And Nina West is coming out with this like silver and gold outfit that is bedazzled to the gods and she's paired it with this tall hair. She goes on to explain that this is a 1950s reference and I'm like, I don't get it. I didn't understand the look. I still don't get the look. If I'm trying to read into it, I'm like, is she a genie coming out of a lamp and is she supposed to be channeling I Dream of Genie? I do not know. So I'm left a little bit perplexed. But when I look at the outfit, what do I get from it? I get glamour. It's got a lot of different stones on it. It's got a lot going on. This is glamorous for someone like Nina, not glamorous for someone like Gottmik, you know, but it definitely is uh, elevated for Nina. On top of it, it's got a little bit of that camp factor, which is very Nina, and, and everything is over the top. So it's kind of checked a lot of the boxes. I'm just unsure 
because I don't know what it's supposed to be. And because I don't know what it's supposed to be, it's hard for me to critique it beyond better saying, is it nice, is it not nice? And that's kind of a shame, you know what I mean? Because I am doing a review channel at the end of the day. But from what I do see, I'm gonna say Nina looks good. This is one of the better outfits that Nina has brought. It definitely looks expensive. And it's for those reasons that even though it's the best Nina has looked, she's still kind of middle of the road for me. And because she's kind of middle of the road, I'm gonna give her a soft, Five. Question mark. And that is it for this week's runway. Girl, I am not sure about this runway. I think this one was a little bit left field. I like the idea of like a post-apocalyptic idea, but then I felt like they should have leaned into that more and maybe done that as a theme. I didn't get the whole atomic blonde mixture in here. It was weird. Honestly, that's the best way I can explain it. But enough about that, and let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to... Oh. Chanel! All in all, I think this was not a great look for Chanel. I didn't get it. It really felt piecemealed, and it just wasn't strong, honestly. I was really excited to see Chanel this season, but it's just, like, not panning out the way she's probably thinking about it, and neither am I, because coming from her promo look and coming from some of her other looks, they're, like, really good, but this one was just not it. I was hoping that she would get her badge, but this is not going to be her week. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, this week it was quite difficult because I had a couple of five stars, but surprisingly, I am going to go with... Gorgeous! Yeah, I know. This was a surprise for me too. There were some, like I said, some gorgeous, gorgeous looks, but I really just like this outfit from Gorgeous. It's got a little bit of that punk rock vibe. She looks sexy. I like the mohawk. It Maybe it channeled a little bit of me or what I think I look like, which I don't, but that's kind of the vibe. And that's why I gave it to Georgia's. And honestly, I don't think I've given Georgia a fab of the week all season. So she deserves it. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my ideas, comments, thoughts, and fabs or drabs of the week? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with my thoughts? Do you agree with who I chose as my fab or drab of the week? And if not, let me know who you would have chosen instead. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.